Hello and welcome to my latest video. So this time we're going to be having a look at the somewhat controversial British John Norman Gore books. So these were the uh, the Chronicles of Tal Kabot and uh, they have become under quite a bit of stick in recent years for their political incorrectness and uh, some of the views of the author. Um, today we're going to be having a look at the British first editions and well that's the subject of today's video. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, so we're starting off with a look at the very first John Norman Gore book, which is this one, Tarnsman of Gore. Now, this one uh, was published in the UK, first of all, by Tandem Publishing, and uh, it has a copyright date of uh, 1970. So that was when this very first uh, Gore book was published. Now, um, I sort of got I suppose I first noticed the Gore books when I was growing up in the 70s. I used to go to a shop in uh, a bookshop in Plymouth called Bonus Books and I would pick up my regular Doctor Who paperback of the month. And um, I always used to see these uh, these amazing Gore books with their like lavish covers. And um, this was very much the time, maybe not in 1970, but this was very much the time when... Um, uh, yeah, the Conan books were all the rage. They'd been rejected and they were doing very, very well. Um, and um, some people had taken over uh, doing their own Conan adaptions. And I guess it sort of stems from that sort of period, really. Um, these first few novels actually aren't too bad. They're proper decent sci-fi. Um, John Norman himself, I think, was born in, in Bristol, which is not actually that far away from me. And um, uh, yeah, the first few books aren't too bad at all. I sort of went off these, I have to say, around book four or five because they started getting um, a, a touch on the side of ridiculous. However, some people have said that the sci-fi elements do come back in in the later novels. Um, but, you know, there's so much, uh, only so much one could actually read and have time to read. But I did end up when I, you know, was um, when I had my store uh, and I used to sell a lot of secondhand sci-fi, I did, um, I did tend to try and pick these up. So I ended up getting, I think, virtually a full set. So that was book one. In, this is in first edition. Uh, this is book two of the uh, uh, series, Outlaw of Ghoul. And uh, once again, I believe these are all first. I won't check them all, but I'm pretty sure they're all first. This was like a year later, 19, 1971 for that one. The actual cover artists on these, I don't know who these particular ones are on some of these early ones. I, I think they could well be just um, tandem publishing house artists. So no one too special. Um, Priest Kings of Gore. Now I do remember this being an actually a, a decent sci-fi book. Has some good sci-fi elements um, and uh, was pretty good fun as I recall. So this wasn't too bad, too bad a book at all uh, for Priest Kings of Gore. Then uh, book four was Nomads. Nomads of Gore, and all these early ones uh, chronicle the uh, the adventures of Tal Kabot. He was the uh, the original hero of the Gore novels. And then we've got uh, book five, which is um, Assassin of Gore, which is pretty cool. Once again, no sign of the. Uh, cover artist being mentioned there at all. Um, I don't think they got any sort of credit on the covers on this. No, this is up to 1973 now for this uh, this first edition. And we've got uh, Raiders of Gore. Volume six. So they are doing the numbering on the back now as well. Number seven, so we've got Captive of Gore here. Of course, one thing these books do get is they steadily get longer and longer in length. Uh, he really sort of goes to town. Um, and I believe he started producing these almost formulaic style by now. And then we've got Hunters of Gore. Uh, now that has, interestingly, got a very small signature. Looks like G. Wood. So that could be the cover artist. He finally gets a credit. Um, G. Wood, is that a George Wood? And when Hunters come out. 
as you can see, this is 1975. As you can see, my copies are not all mint by any means. Some of these are actually really, really tough to get your hands on. So uh, let's just pop those up there. Um, in the second hand market, I've tried a long time to try and upgrade them, but this is pretty much as good as good as I've got. This is Marauders of Gore, Volume 9, Tribesman. So it was still um, being published by Tandem, but I believe this is the last uh, Tandem book uh, before they became Star Books. Um, not the greatest of covers, that one. I think they changed the cover artist, but they're now the full jacket with the now familiar logo. Um, I wonder if the cover artist is actually marked on that one. No, it's not, but um, it's difficult. It's not an artist's work that I recognize. So it's a bit of a hard one to guess that one. Maybe someone could pop that in the comments below. Then we've got Slave Girl of Gore. Now this artist I do know, um, and that little A there down the bottom is actually the Greek artist, Christos Achillos, um, and he, uh, the only reason I know that artist is because he was famous for um, doing a lot of the Doctor Who cover work, um, and this is, uh, you see the publisher's changed now to Universal Tandem, um, and that's part of the Wyndham Group, so these were the, the people who were also publishing um, uh, the Doctor Who books at this time in hardback, um, and in paperback under the Target imprint, so that's Slave Girl of Gore. And then we've got Beasts of Gore, and this is the first one I've got, which is completely under the Star brand uh, imprint. Uh, don't recognize that cover artist. That's not a bad copy of that one, Beasts of Gore. And we've got Explorers of Gore. Now, this is, you know, very the first of, I would say, the very controversial jackets. It's got the, uh, the women um, in, in chains there. Um, certainly that had its own audience um but how they could keep um pushing these out as sci-fi i don't really know at this point um but that's certainly a quite a controversial jacket that one for explorers of gore next fighting slave of gore uh, once again no actual sign of the cover artist on this one but i'm imagining it is once again chris Achilles, um for that one another star one Rogue of Gore. So that's a bit more in the style of a Conan cover, you could say. And that's Rogue of Gore. Now, I'm going to have to move these slightly more out of the camera because there's so many of them and they take up so much space. Alas, I can't show them all at the same time. So on to the next one, which is Guardsman of Gore. I don't recognize the cover artist on that one, but that's that work to volume 16 now for Guardsmen. Savages of Gore. Still Tarkabolt, but I believe he takes a break quite soon. Now these, uh, these last few volumes, um, I, they just get really, really big in size. Um, this one has Blood Brothers of Gore. It's got a cover artist, uh, Mastero, or Masiro. And that's quite nice with a little uh, montage of the rest of the, some of the rest of the series. Volume 18 for Tarl Kabot. And by now, I guess we're at the late 70s, early 80s, are we? In fact, we're at 80, 83 for this paperback. So we are coming towards the end of sort of the golden era, as it were. Now, I've never known how to uh, actually pronounce this one. Kajara, Kajara of Gore. Um, really nice uh, jacket on that one. Very nice artwork indeed. Volume 19. Let's put these to one side. As I said, we're rapidly running out of room. Number 19. Number 20, the 20th book, so a bit of an anniversary. Masiro, again, was the, uh, the artist for Players of Gore. Number 21, Mercenaries of Gore. That's a great, uh, a great cover there. Yeah, still Tarl Kabot there. 
Dancer of Gore. And that's an excellent, uh, excellent jacket, that one. Some of these uh, later ones are so, so hard to find in nice condition. Um, if you are a collector and you're trying to get a run of these together, it can be very, very hard. 23rd book, Renegades of Gore. This is of the original, original series. I'm guessing by now the print runs started to wane because these last couple are harder to find. And in actual fact, of the original 25 book run, um, you know, as I'm sure fans are aware, in America it ran originally up to uh, Magicians of Gore, which is number 25. This is the last one that uh, that never got published in the UK, and this was the last paperback um, in the original run, which was Vagabonds of Gore, which is also very, very hard to get your hands on um, in a nice first edition. And when was this? This was published in 87. So it's still over 30 years old now. Now I've got two other books to show you and then I've got some interesting cover proofs which you might like. So he didn't just do, a bit dusty this one, he didn't just do the Gore books, he did do some other books as well. This one is on the, uh, it's on the Sioux Indians as I remember, yeah. Um, based at the massacre at Wounded Knee. So this is by, this is published by Spear, so not his normal publisher. This was in 1972, this first edition of Ghost Dance. And one other one, which was very much to get to his gore audience, was um, Time Slave. And as you can see here, this is uh, very much to appeal to the, um, the gore audience. Nice uh, jacketed cover there, an illustration on the, the side there. And this volume of Time Slave was published in 1981. Now, the other thing I've got to show, so that's all my British books, but what I have got to show you are some pretty rare cover proofs. So I'm just going to pop those to one side. So we've got a bit of room to show you these. So these came from um, a book dealer friend of mine. And um, each month, the, the book reps, the, uh, in this case, the book rep for Star and John Wyndham, will come into the shop and he'd have a little folder with all the, the latest books for that publisher for the month. And uh, they would include the Doctor Who ones, which he used to save. And he also saved a set of these. And uh, he knew that I collected the, the British Gore books, so he gave me a set for myself. So that's what these are. So they're literally, some of them have got, I think, in, in, info on the book on the back, but these are like perforated down the spine. And these are just advanced cover proofs so you could see. So these are, this is obviously for a reissue of the first Gore book. And then we've got book number two, which is Outlaw of Gore. So I've kept these because A, they're pretty rare for starters, and B, they've got alternative covers to the ones that I've got in my collection anyway. I haven't got them all. Uh, this one now jumps to volume four. This is a Chris Aquilos uh, jacket. As is this one, really detailed that one, volume five, Assassin. Volume six, we've got Raiders of Gore. Volume seven, uh, which is Captive. Volume 8, Hunters, another controversial cover. Volume 9, which is Marauders, Chris Akilos again, cover artist. That slightly odd cover of number 10, not the greatest one by any means. Volume 11, Slave Girl, which is Chris Akilos again. Number 12, Beasts of Gore. Number 13, Explorers of Gore. This is uh, Time Slave, the one that we just had a look at. Ghost Dance, which this is a later reissue of Ghost Dance, not the one that uh, we had a look at in the video. And also, this one came in in the same collection. Um, it's not Gore, it's not even Tarzan, it's just sort of capitalizing on that sort of market, just to show you that there were other books around at that time that were trying to uh, jostle in, in this market. Um, as I said, including the Tarzan and the rejected um, Conan books as well. So there you go, that's the end of today's video. If you have enjoyed it, do please give it a thumbs up. If you've not liked the content, 
give it a thumbs down. I would be very interested to know how my viewers feel about this series. If it does prove popular, I will do a little follow-up video showing the American first editions, and I've got about the first 10 French or so editions as well. So thank you once again for watching. Whatever your opinions on this, do please consider subscribing for regular vintage content going forward, and I'll see you soon. Bye.